Hey guys, going to show you how to make some BNC cables, you know, the sort of things that you use on your oscilloscopes and whatnot. I'm going to be using Kinair, common uh, brand here in Japan, very, very high quality, very well made, and not too expensive. These are a, uh, a BPC4, that's the uh, part number of the connector, got a box of 20 here, and um, I've used, already used some, but uh, these are a uh, 50 ohm style for RG58A slash U, um, the standard sort of RG58 50 ohm cable with the uh, stranded core. Come in three parts. You've got the uh, connector itself. Very, very nice there. Very nice connector. Then also we've got, of course, the center pin and a collar because these are crimp. These are not uh, solder type. So they're very good for um, high frequency work. So the problem with uh, using a solder type, in the center pin it's not so bad because you can get the solder nice and smooth, but it's on the outside. When you solder it, often what people do is they'll pull the, uh, the outer shield off to the side as a little pigtail, and they solder that onto the side. Low frequency, audio frequencies, not a problem, but when you go into high frequencies, it can, uh, it can alter the impedance at that point, and also the shielding, because it's pulled to the side, you've got a small unshielded section. Because the braid's not even, pull to the side, interference comes in, uh, impedance changes, and it can affect your readings at high frequencies like gigahertz and whatnot. So crimping is always the best way to go. We've got the uh, gear here though, so that's all right. So I've got my connector, got my pin and collar. We're also going to need the crimper. Now this is a Canair brand crimper, not very cheap. So you can go to uh, eBay and get a, a standard crimper for, what, 30 bucks or something shipped. The handle alone is 100 bucks. Just the handle, not not including the dive section. Um, but there's a reason for that. Made in Sweden. I mean, you're paying for the Canair name. It's like a purpose-built thing. This is a standard handle, but it is very high quality. Uh, made in Sweden. Probably put together by uh, by Nude Virgins. So, yeah, a very, it's, it's a very nice, very precise. It doesn't have the wobble and the, uh, the flex like cheap Chinese ones do. Also, the, uh, the die... You've got to buy that separately as well, and for this die, for these uh, connectors, is about 120 bucks just for those two pieces in the jaws there. But if I hold it up there, very, very nice machining. Not like the uh, the slapped together Chinese stuff you'll buy for 30 bucks. So it does cost a lot more for the proper tooling, but it's a lot nicer tool. It's it's precision. This is perfect stuff. So. That will come in a sec, we'll use that, but for now, we've got our cable, RG58A slash U, and you can see it there maybe, if that's going to focus properly. This is uh, Fujikura, which is a Japanese brand, very hard to find a uh, Belden cable here in Japan, uh, which I would prefer just because I'm more familiar with Belden, and they are a very uh, high quality company, but Fujikura is very good, a uh, Japanese brand, so um, yeah, not a problem there at all. The specs all are pretty much the same as, uh, as Belden. This is the uh, Kinair TS100 cable stripper. Look at this thing. This is probably about 60 bucks worth of stripper. Again, not very cheap, but there's no mess once you've got it calibrated, there's no messing around. You can have five presets in this thing. All you've got to do is turn the handle. You see that? It's turning around inside there. See all those screws? That's all your settings for the blades, because what they do, those screws are set to a certain depths for whatever cable you're using. And uh, they press down on uh, these little levers, see those levers there? There's three of them. And they press down on those, or press up, or whichever direction, and then on those levers are some, I don't know if you can see in there, right down near where those red bits are, uh, there's, some, there's three circular blades, and uh, it sets the depth of those blades, so it cuts your cable perfectly. One rotation, or one operation, just rotate a few times, pull it out and it's stripped perfectly, all the different sections. Cheaper ones you got to go around and then you got to set it differently, put it in a different part, go around again, go around again. This does a whole lot in one go. So it is a very, very nice piece of kit. The engineering is um, quite impressive. Now you can see there all the screws for the, uh, the settings. So yeah, five cables in one. You don't have to reset it each time you're going to strip cable, which is very good for productivity. So we stick the cable in the end in the handle section here, and goes all the way through to that little window there. If 
I can get that right, you might be able to see the cable through the window. A little bit hard to see, but close the lid. Oh, you can make sure you can you can look it down in here. Make sure the cable's in place. I can see it anyway. Close that. Go around a couple of times. Flick it open. This one here, that's for a, a slide a side slicer. So as you pull it out, it'll slice along. Um, I've got to calibrate it a little bit better, but it's all right because I can. There you go. You see, just slices that piece of a uh, shield or oh, the uh, outer insulation. I mean, straight off. And there we go. Perfectly stripped in one go. Beautiful. Sixty bucks makes life easy. Now, if you're uh, already got a connector on the end, on the other end, make sure you put the boot and the the sleeve and whatnot on here before you uh, you crimp. It's a pain in the ass to have to waste a crimp and cut it off because you didn't put the uh, the proper parts on. So I haven't done it on this end, so we can do that second. But what we're going to do, we'll put this uh, the center pin on. Little gold plated thing here. Slide that on, just on the end there like that. Get our crimper. You can see there's a uh, the small hole just here. It's a square shape. Some of these are square, some of them are hexagonal. For Kinair, they often use a square for the uh, the inner inner pin. And on this pin, if I can get that to focus nice and close, you see at the end, there's a little, like a, a lip. You've got to crimp right up against that lip. Make sure it's uh, crimped correctly. So we go like that. I'll turn it a quarter of a turn. Give it another go. And there we go. Look at that. Nice. Not a problem at all. So give that a wiggle. Bit of a rotation. Just to spread out those, uh, spread out that, that shield there. That allows us to slide this on without any of the strands going inside the, um, the tube. They're not going to touch the end anyway, but it's uh, a bit of a pain in the ass when they go inside. Push it in until it clicks. You make an audible click and then give it a bit of a yank just to make sure it's not going to come off. That ain't coming apart. So next step is the, uh, the collar. Now with the collar, you see there's some uh, recessed bits on this side, like grooves. They go away from the connector. So it goes on the connector like that. See the grooves here? They're on away from the connector. So let's feed that on. Like that. Make sure it's pushed all the way up. We're going to use the, uh, the smaller hole of the two large holes, not the middle one, that one there, for this connector. It's pretty obvious which one you have to use. You can't really mix it up. Make sure that's all crimped down and look at that. One more step. We've got the boot. So the boot just slides in. Bang. Done. Nice. That is good for gigahertz. That's a perfect crimp. Kinair brand. I'm not affiliated with Kinair. I just use them because I like them. They're nice and chunky. They look nice and they're very high performing, very high quality. But yeah, the, the basic crimping process is the same for other brands. Uh, it's just different sized uh, dies and the stripping lengths might be slightly different. But yeah, that is ready for action. All I've got to do is uh, do the other end. All right, guys. I'm going to get back into it. I've been doing a few of these, as you can see. Been stocking up. Add that one to the pile. And uh, I'm almost ready to start testing stuff. All right, guys. Hope you found that helpful. We'll see you next time.